Acer is a brand that's often overshadowed by some of the big dogs like HP, Dell, and Lenovo. Nonetheless, they make their fair share of PC laptops, and one of their more popular offerings undoubtedly is the Acer Aspire 5. This right here is the most current configuration. It is rocking Intel's i5 1335U series processor, 16 gigabytes of DDR5 memory. We also have a reasonably large 512 gigabyte sauce drive additionally you have intel's integrated iris xc graphics wi-fi 6e bluetooth 5.3 and also of course a nice large 17 inch lcd screen and there is a lot to talk about with the aspire 5 as it is like i mentioned a very popular laptop second only to the big three so let's get into it Unfortunately, like most other mid-range PC laptops, the boxing here is dry, lame, and just generic, so you don't expect a lot in terms of the unpackaging experience. Nonetheless, it's what's inside that counts, right? So once you open up the box behind a ton of protective packaging, here it is the Acer Aspire 5, and it looks very similar to the 2022 model, but more on that in a minute. You also have a basic bare bones 65 watt charging adapter, which which is appropriate, though it would have been nice if you had USB-C charging from the box rather than the proprietary pin they provide. You also have the charging cable piece, and finally a quick start guide, warranty, and other basic documentation for the laptop. The design we see here is entirely the same as last year's Aspire 5 model for both the 15 and 17 inch laptop and I think that's totally reasonable as it was only just recently redesigned altogether last year so I don't think it's unreasonable for Acer to recycle design for one more year at least. With that said, overall it's got a very utilitarian look to it. You've got clean linear edges. It's very proportionate. The laptop looks exactly the same no matter which angle you're looking at it from. No unnecessary sleek corners or unnecessary textures. Of course, it is worth noting that the top half of the laptop has a metallic exterior, while the bottom half has a plastic finish, which is more or less in line with most mid-range PC laptops. It's also worth noting the laptop has an overall weight of about 5.1 pounds, which is expected given it's a 17-inch laptop. It will be a little bit lower if you get the 15-inch variant of this machine. Now, starting with the top side, like I mentioned, you have a flat, clean surface, no unnecessary textures. It is a metallic exterior. The color here is steel gray and then Acer has some very subtle branding at the top side so pretty clean stuff. You will find that all the relevant ports are located on either side of this laptop. So on one side you have the proprietary DC charging port. Next to that you have a fully loaded USB-C Thunderbolt 4 port, a modern HDMI 2.1 port, a USB-A super speed port with reverse power delivery. On the other side you will find you have one more USB-A super speed port and a headphone jack. What's missing here is a SD card reader of sorts. Honestly this laptop has little excuse not including one on such a large machine considering it's a general productivity laptop. On the rear side of this laptop is where you will find the primary heat exhaust vent to help keep the laptop running nice and cool. Now the bottom plating is entirely plastic and it is removable. You'll also notice you have three layers of air intake vents, though it's worth noting only half of these are actually open. I guess you could say the rest of them didn't make the cut. These lame jokes are probably the reason why half of you aren't subscribing. Anyway, the point being, you'll also notice you have speaker grills on either bottom corner. This is a bottom firing speaker setup and we will do a sound test a little bit later on in the video. This is the Devoom TimeGate. It is a super futuristic looking clock and for good reason. For beginners, it comes in one of the most mesmerizing packaging I've seen. It literally feels like you are taking out a time machine. But this thing is super cool for a number of reasons. Firstly, it's USB-C powered and it has five individual mini displays that's right and each one of them can work individually 
or in harmony. For example, I have this really cool retro themed clock theme going here, or you could change it up and have stuff like your YouTube metric show or just have individual animations. The possibilities are limitless and you can control all of it with the Devoom app. It also has built in RGB lighting for cool aesthetics. There is so much going on for this clock. It is the perfect aesthetical appeal for any desk or even bedside if you want. To learn more about it, I will leave links in the video description below so you can check it out for yourself. Upon unfolding this laptop, there's a few observations to be made. Firstly, you have a nice clean metallic exterior here as well, and you have an abundant amount of space with the palm rest enough to accommodate all sorts of hand sizes. At the dead center, you have a nice large trackpad. And what I like here is that Acer has made subtle improvements. For example, there is considerably less flex over here than previous iterations. It's a lot more tactile. It's well calibrated. And genuinely speaking, this is not a bad trackpad. The keyboard in comparison is okay in terms of its overall quality. So yes, you do have nice large keycaps that are pretty well labeled. Additionally, you'll also appreciate the fact that the keyboard is fully backlit, albeit with weak illumination. You also have the inclusion of a full-sized 10 keypad for your number crunchers out there, and the layout is pretty good as well, though there is no biometric scanning, including fingerprint or facial recognition, unfortunately. Now, the quality of the actual typing experience through this keyboard suffers a little bit. Firstly, the keycaps feel slightly loose, almost finicky, if you will. On top of that, there is a considerable amount of flex at the center of this keyboard, which provides for a bit of a shallow typing experience. The hinge quality, considering this is a 17 inch mid-range laptop is actually decent. There's a fairly contained amount of wobble when compared to other 17 inch laptops. It's not too tight, but it's also not overly loose. So it's a good balance. Now display fitting is very utilitarian, so it doesn't necessarily look super modern. So you have a fairly thick chin at the bottom with some Acer branding. The bezels are not super narrow, but they are modern enough for current day standards. Past that, you will notice you have have a fairly small forehead at the top side, which is nice, but unfortunately, Acer had the audacity to include a 720p webcam in 2023. This is frankly just unacceptable and uncalled for. You just basically look like a Minecraft character when you're using the webcam. Let's talk about the display quality. It just feels like Acer went to Alibaba.com and ordered the cheapest display they could find to put on this laptop, unfortunately. So let's talk about it. You get a decent resolution of 1920 by 1080 or full HD, fair enough. A 16 by nine aspect ratio. Additionally, it is a IPS panel, which is now the default, which is also good news. However, everything beyond that is a little gloomy. First and foremost, you'll notice that the screen itself has a maximum peak brightness of just 200 and 50 nits. This is not anywhere near enough to compensate for brighter daylight settings or even a super bright room. Additionally, they do have a anti-glare coating supposedly, but it's not very effective at actually preventing glare. Now, to make things even more depressing, you have a peak sRGB rating of 64% with this display. That is not great if you are doing anything that's color sensitive like photo or video editing, for example, and movies even or media content just doesn't look all that appealing. In terms of general performance, the Aspire 5 is ultimately a power efficiency based laptop. As such, it has a i5 1335U series processor. It has LPDDR five 16 gigabytes of memory and it has Intel's integrated Iris XE graphics. All this means that general day-to-day -day activities like web surfing, for example, are a total breeze. Even more demanding activities like programming or coding, or even to a good extent 3D modeling are very much possible and work fairly smooth on this machine. Now, when you push it beyond that with multi-layer 10-bit 4K video editing on DaVinci Resolve, for example, while it is possible, you do notice there are frequent frame drops, especially when you have too many layers of video stacked on each other. And I wouldn't call it the most ideal experience, though again, you can make do with it. And if you're doing less than 4K video editing, it should definitely be a smooth experience overall. Gaming here is definitely possible in a casual capacity. For example, Fortnite was running at a healthy 60 plus frames per second at the upper end of lower settings, which I honestly was not expecting and definitely means that there is some degree of capacity for general casual gaming.
Thermals are pretty cool as well. Under unrealistic peak loads, we hit a maximum average surface temperature of just around 42 degrees Celsius. However, more realistic sustained loads will yield you a pretty cool 37 degrees Celsius, which is a very healthy number to be at. Fan noise isn't bad either. We peaked at around 55 decibels under peak load with the machine. Though to be fair, this is a single fan setup. And when Acer does eventually release a discrete graphics card version of this laptop, we might need to revisit visit these numbers. In terms of upgradability, you can technically upgrade the storage to a maximum of one terabyte thanks to the PCIe and VME slot they have. However, because this is LPDDR5 memory, RAM cannot be upgraded if soldered directly onto the motherboard. So make sure you configure the appropriate amount from the get-go. You have a 50 watt hour battery here, which will realistically give you about seven and a half hours of maximum usage time if you're doing relatively low use activities. Now, as far as the speaker quality goes, like I mentioned, it's a bottom firing stereo speaker setup and the Spire 5s aren't really known for their sound quality and this here is no exception. There is distortion, higher volume levels and generally speaking it's fairly underwhelming. Here's a quick sound test for reference. Up. Every day's tough. I'm just hoping I can make it through the same stuff. Got a bad job, got no love. Feel so alone, feel so stuck. Gotta find something to look forward to. Anything to keep my mind. Retailing for approximately 800 US dollars, the Acer Aspire 17 definitely brings a fair bit of value. Its build quality is respectable and modernized. Additionally, while the input devices may not be industry leading, they're pretty good on their own, and you also get a good set of IO port standards. Now, while these things do make this laptop great, there are certain compromises, and some of them are unnecessary. Like, for example, there should be a full HD webcam on here, there's just no excuse for that, or they could have improved the display quality at least a little bit more by increasing the brightness. But nonetheless, Acer doesn't necessarily hide these facts. They kind of just outright present them to you. And for someone who's a general user who might just be getting this for general business reasons or school, for example, this laptop should suffice for your needs. Though I will say if you are leaning towards very specific use cases like creative uses or gaming, for example, I would not advise this laptop in that scenario because its specifications are designed for maximum power power efficiency and general performance as opposed to anything else. Let me know what you think of this laptop and keep in mind it'll probably also have a 15 inch refresh soon as well and the pricing on that will definitely be cheaper if I had to guess by about $100 give or take for the same specifications. As always again, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the content, please consider subscribing to this channel. Catch you in the next one.